In this video we're going to do an example on a savings account and an example on gas mileage and for each uh, homework question and example in in these uh, this section we'll try and follow this, um, th this, this these steps. So let's do the savings account first and it says you can uh, remember you can either print off these notes or, or these uh, pages or you can just write down the question if you like. Your savings account pays 3% per year and the interest is compounded yearly. That is, each year accrued interest is added to your account balance. What does accrued mean? Earned interest, right? The earned interest is added to your account balance. So your account balance increases each year, doesn't it? Is the amount of money in your savings account a linear function of the number of years since it was opened? Now once again, I'm just writing out this question just like it is in your textbook. It gives you this this you know sentence here, but I mean the point is, please follow these steps one, two, three, four because you have other things to do besides just answer whether it is linear because if it is linear, you got to find a formula and explain the growth rate. But if it's not linear, of course, you just have to do the first two steps, make a table and then determine whether it's linear. If it's not linear, you just say it's not linear, okay? So, anyway, um, what are we gonna, what's the problem here? How are we gonna make a table at all? We only have one number in there, that's the 3%. That's the only number we have. Any ideas? How are we gonna make some sort of a table with this thing? Maybe we should put some money into the bank account and see what happens to it. Would that be a good idea? Put in a deposit. So you can put any any amount of money you like. Just for fun, I'm going to pick a thousand a thousand dollars. So just for fun, I'm going to put one thousand dollars into the account and see what happens. Right. So how what's our table going to look like? Gonna make a table, right? Well, let's do that first. You can all do that. Now, is the amount of money in your savings account a linear function of the number of years since it was opened? The amount of money in the account a linear function of the number of years. So, what's going to be on the input column and what's going to be on the output column? Well, basically, we're just going to figure out the balance after cer after different numbers of years. Does that make sense? And you might be a good idea to start with year zero and then look what happens after year one, right? Let's just start there at least. So if you imagine year zero, that's when you put the money in. So what's the balance? thousand dollars right year one now on this I'm gonna do calculations to the right year one and I'm gonna put the number here so that we can do our check the rate of change to see if we've got a constant growth rate so anyway after year one we've got a thousand dollars plus the interest right that makes sense doesn't it at the end of the first year you've got thousand dollars plus the interest and the interest is three percent of one thousand right now what is three percent as a decimal three percent equals what and just a quick reminder on percentages per means divide cent means hundred there are one hundred years in a century there are one hundred cents in a dollar so three per and per means divide so it's three divided by 100 three per cent right and as a decimal that's three hundredths and that means that's just like having three cents of a dollar for example so that is 0 0.03 as a decimal right or you can just move the decimal point you, a lot of you might have learned just move the decimal point two spaces to the left but it's good to remember why so anyway three percent of a thousand 3% is 0 0.03. What does of mean? What's the meaning of of, the word of in math? It means 
multiply, divide, add, or subtract. Which? It means multiply, doesn't it? So the interest is 3% of a thousand, or 0 0.03 times a thousand. Okay, so what we have is the one thousand dollars plus the interest, and calculate this: zero point zero three times a thousand. That's the interest, which makes thirty dollars, right? Thousand plus thirty, so that is one thousand and thirty dollars, right? Now, let's have a look. Would it be a good idea to see what happens after two years, right? So again, I'm these numbers I'm making up. This is all what I've made up in my imagination. I've made up the thousand. I've made up the years. All these that are all made up. Okay, made them up, and then I've calculated just so I can see what happens with an account like this. That's all I'm trying to see, right? And to see if it's linear. What happens to the money in an account like this? So after year two, you still have your thousand and thirty dollars, right? but you have to calculate the interest. You have to calculate 3% of what? 3% of the $1,030, right? Because you get uh, interest on what's already in there. Now, that is 3% is 0 0.03, right? Of means multiply, so I'll do that. And we have 1030 plus 3% 0 0.03 times this gives $30 and 90 cent and if we add those together we get $1060.90 right so we have some inputs and outputs on this table and like you gotta make sure when you do this you gotta make sure your inputs are going up by the same amount these are going up by the same amount right and what's happening to the outputs here we're gonna check to see whether this is a linear function so we want to see if we've got a a, a constant growth rate or not so a thousand to thousand and thirty is up by thirty and a thousand and thirty to one thousand sixty ninety is how much more is this than a thousand and thirty? It is how much more? It's an extra thirty dollars ninety cent. So do we have a constant growth rate? Is this a linear function? we don't have a constant growth rate. This increase was more than this. And that would make sense. If you leave money in an account that's earning interest like that, it just increases and increases and increases. So this is not constant growth rate. Oh, I'm going to do it here, sorry. Not constant growth so we have not a linear function right not a linear function so um, that's that I'm just for fun I'm just gonna do three years just just for fun so after three years we would have one thousand and sixty dollars and ninety cent plus 3% of $1,060.90. And, you know, there's a couple of reasons. The other reason is just to follow my own rules of using four inputs and four outputs, just so we can clearly see that uh, this isn't linear. So just to clearly check that this isn't linear. Okay. So we get the last year's balance plus 3% of the... Um, uh, the interest on, on, on last year's balance, so it's a thousand sixty dollars ninety cent, and we'll just plug this in the calculator. Zero point zero three times one oh six oh ninety cents, so thirty one point eight two seven. So we'll call that thirty one point eight 
31 dollars um, 83 cent let's say add that to 1060.90 and we have basically um, 1092 and 73 cent right 1092.73 and what's the increase now how much does it increase from here to here definitely increased by we'll just have to take that number and subtract the 1060.90 and of course that's the it's increased by the new interest amount obviously right 30 increased by 31 dollars 83 cent okay so what does the growth rate mean in this case and oh sorry before I ask that the growth rate was 30 then it was 30 90 then it was 31 83 so it's definitely not constant there's there's another example just to prove it is definitely the growth uh, rate is actually increasing with each year obviously as your as, as, as your interest is accrued um, and added on and you calculate interest on the new balance of course you get uh, more money so each year so uh, what does this growth rate mean it, it is the interest right this is definitely the interest Let's look at the, oh sorry, so w once again an example for, we've, we've determined that the function is not linear and, and you're done. That's all you got to do because we're not going to find a formula for it if it's not linear, okay? Okay, so let's have a look at gas mileage. Your car gets 35 miles per gallon when it travels on a highway at 60 miles per hour. Is the number of miles you can drive at 60 miles per hour a linear function of the number of gallons of gas in the tank? Interesting. So we have number of miles you can drive. You can drive a linear function of the number of gallons of gas in the tank. When when we see the sentence in this, this case, it might help you figure out what goes where when you make your table. Is number of miles a linear function of number of gallons of gas in the tank, right? So why don't we do this? Put some gas in the tank, right? And then figure out number of miles you can drive. How about that? Does that make sense? Number of miles you can drive, it tells you right there, and number of gallons of gas in the tank. So let's stick in some numbers for gallons. Any ideas? And you, could, you don't have to do the same numbers I do in this example. You can do your own if you like. long as you give four inputs and four outputs and determine whether or not the function is linear. I'm just going to start just for fun with zero gallons and then one gallon and see what happens. If I have zero gallons in the tank how many miles can I drive? 35 miles per gallon? Zero, right? If I have one gallon in the tank how many miles can I drive? It's 35 miles per gallon you know drive at, at 60 miles per hour I'll put just to remind you so we're going at 60 miles per hour right I can go one gallon in the in, in the tank I can go 35 miles two gallons in the tank what can I do I can do I can do 35 miles plus another 35 miles which would be 70, right? 3 gallons in the tank I can do 35 miles plus another 35 plus another 35 
Or in other words, 35 times what? Times 3, right? Or in other words, 105 miles, right? So, um, is this a linear function? Let's figure that out. We've done our four inputs and outputs. Now let's determine whether the function is linear or not. 0 to 35. Is that an increase or a decrease? That's an increase. So here we're calculating the growth rate to see if it's constant. So that's an increase of 35. 35 to 70 is an increase of what? 35. 70 to 105 is an increase of what? Increase of 35, right? So the as the gallons increase by 1, and your inputs must increase by the same amount to, if you're checking these things, your your miles is increasing by 35, right? So it is a, uh, it is this is a constant growth rate. So we do indeed have a constant growth rate. Which means this is a linear function. Or I'll put that like this is a linear function. How about that? And um, we'll also give the meaning of the growth rate. We have to do that too. And we also have to find a formula. Hmm. Okay, well, we could do either one first. We've got to explain practical terms to mean that the growth rate and also find a formula. Well why don't we just see if we can get the meaning of the growth rate first. The miles, number of miles you can drive is increasing by 35 for each extra gallon of gas that you're putting in the tank. Does that make sense? So that's pretty much saying it all there. So how would we describe the meaning of the growth rate? See if you can press pause and just say it. What does this plus 35 business mean in this context? Okay, I'm going to give it a go now. How about this? How about for every extra gallon of gas in the tank, we can go an extra 35 miles. Does that make sense? So we can drive an extra 35 miles for each extra gallon of gas in the tank. Does that make sense? And um, can we find a formula for this function? Can we find a formula? We've got to do number three. Find a formula, right? Um, let's see. If there were 10 gallons in the tank, what would the number of miles be? You can go 35 miles per gallon. Press pause and write down the answer. Now remember, when there was three gallons in there, we went 35 times three, right? How about how about 35 times what? 10? We can go 350 miles, right? So let me ask you this. If there were X gallons in the tank, how far could you go? Thirty-five times what? Times X, right? So our formula, our gallons could be x input and the number of miles could be y. And we could say that the number of miles y equals 35 times the number of gallons in the tank x, right? And that is, of course, of the form y equals mx plus b, where the growth rate m, or the slope, is 35 and b is zero. So the initial value is zero. In other words, you can go zero, uh, 
we start at zero miles. That's the initial value. Start at zero miles with zero gallons, right? And the other way to calculate the formula course is we could say, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let me just get a quick piece of paper here. We could say that number of miles you can drive equals 35 times the number of gallons in the tank. Some students like to do that. That's fine. And you can go y equals 35x. So don't be afraid to use words if words help as well.